Dr. Pooja and today again we are going to do the uh, reading session of the Gnome, right? Now uh, today we are going to take a short topic and we are going to discuss it and that is nothing but the cystic fibrosis. So I am taking the reference of Gnome 26th edition page number 612 uh, and in that we are going to have the box that is a clinical box which is given that is cystic fibrosis. Day. This diagram I added over here so that uh, to have a better understanding okay so let's start with the cystic fibrosis among whites cystic fibrosis is one of the most common genetic disorder greater than three percent of the united states population are carriers for this uh, autosomal recessive disease now only thing to remember over here what type of disease it is now remember this is nothing but the autosomal recessive disorder this is important over here this is autosomal recessive disorder then the gene that is abnormal in cystic fibrosis is located on the long arm of chromosome 7 and encodes the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator that is CFTR gene. A two question usually comes in your MCQs that is chromosome number and which uh, is the gene that is defective over here that is nothing but chromosome number 7 and the CFTR gene which is defective over here. The, uh, and what this gene is important for or what is its significance a regulated chlor, uh, chloride channel located on the apical membrane of va various secretory and absorptive epithelia now this CFTR gene as the name suggests over here this is a cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator now conductance of which particular ion we are talking over here that is nothing but the chloride right so if this gene is defective definitely the chloride channels will be defective okay the number of reported mutation in cftr gene that cause cystic fibrosis is large more than thousand and the mutation are now grouped into five classes now in physiology in the genome it is written as five classes but yes some medicine books they also classified in six different groups. I do have a diagram. I'll show it to you later. But definitely if in exam the question comes, you can write these five classes. Now, uh, based on the effect of cellular function, then let's see what are the, those classes. That is class 1, mutation do not allow for synthesis of protein. That means in class 1 or mutation uh, class 1 in the cystic fibrosis, we do have uh, the deficient synthesis okay then class 2 mutation have protein processing defect in the class 2 we are having processing defect I colored it uh, accordingly right you can see over here class 3 mutation have a block in their uh, channel regulation 3 regulation defect class 4 mutation display altered conductance in the ion channel now the synthesis is normal the processing is normal even the channel regulation is normal but there is some conductance defect which is uh, which will be there the class 5 mutation display a reduced synthesis of protein now understand there is a difference between class 1 and class 5 in class 1 uh, the uh, gene is not at all able to synthesize any amount of chloride channel but yes, the class 5 is synthesizing the chloride channel, but it is reduced. Okay, that's the only difference between class 1 and class 5. So, as you go uh, from class 1 to class 5, the severity actually decreases. The severity of the disease is actually decreases. Okay, the severity of the Mm, defect varies with the class and the individual mutation we just now saw that from class 1 class 1 not at all no synthesis of chloride channel and that is going to be the most severe disease right and as you go towards class 5 the uh, severity is going to reduce the most common mutation causing cystic fibrosis is loss of the phenyl alanine residue at amino acid position 508-508 of the protein uh, that is uh, it is written as delta F508. 
a class 2 mutation that limits the amount of CFDR, uh, CFDR protein that gets to the plasma membrane. These type of questions usually asked in the US mini questions. I saw that if they ask factual question, definitely they are going to not ask you directly, but yes, they're going to give the case scenario related to the cystic fibrosis symptoms and then they can ask the most common type of cystic fibrosis or or how the what protein is defective over here next one outcome of cystic fibrosis is a repeated pulmonary infection particularly with pseudomonas aeruginosa and progressive eventually fetal destruction of lung now i understand that over here this can be uh, the physiology question or your microbiome question mainly in the mcqs they definitely ask oh, what is the most common organism which is responsible for pulmonary infections in the cystic fibrosis that is going to be your pseudomonas aeruginosa right and then uh, it is going to be progressive and why it is fatal now understand the elasticity of the lung is very important to you know have the inspiration and expiration especially the recoil of the lung but uh, as the repeated infection occurs after some time the elastic tissue is going to get replaced by the fibroblast and definitely this is going to have the fatal effect or fatal destruction of the parenchyma of the lung next there is also suppressed chloride secretion across the wall of the airways one would expect uh, sodium reabsorption to be depressed as well and indeed in sweat glands it is now understand there are two things happening first is in the lungs and second is in the sweat gland now understand what is happening in the sweat gland look over here the sodium reabsorption is depressed i'll just mark it over here sodium reabsorption is depressed that means usually in sweat glands what happens is uh, through the sweat we excrete out the sodium as well as chloride now as we talk that chloride child effect is there that means uh, in the sweat uh, there is a lot of loss of electrolyte okay so we try to reabsorb back those sodium and chloride now why the sodium defect over here understand we always try to maintain the electro neutrality in the body now over here you can see that the sodium is a positively charged ion while the chloride is negatively charged ion if you cannot absorb the chloride uh, and just absorb the sodium that will cause more positivity inside which the body will not allow okay if you have to choose between uh, one of them that is electro neutrality or chemical uh, neutrality or gradient then definitely we will go with the electro neutrality first okay so uh, to maintain the potential in okay so over here we can see that the reabsorption of chloride won't be occurring especially in the sweat uh, and that's why the sodium will also uh, be left outside and it won't get uh, reabsorbed back into the blood or glands so yes the sodium reabsorption is decreased on the other hand in the lungs what happens is usually we excrete the sodium and chloride why because see sodium chloride is osmotically active particle they can drag the water also in the airways and make the mucus somewhat you know uh, liquidified okay so that the other secretion will not get thick but over here there is a problem that we are not able to or the patient of cystic fibrosis is having the problem in the chloride channel and that's why he is not able to secrete the chloride if the chloride is not going obviously the sodium won't go if the sodium is not going the water won't go then now what is going to happen inside the lungs let's see however in the lungs it is enhanced okay uh, so what is enhanced the sodium reabsorption and chloride reabsorption is enhanced okay so that the sodium and water move out of the airways that means it is going to go back into the glands and um, leaving the other secretion uh, inspissated that means thickened and sticky they are going to be very very sticky this results in the reduced periciliary layer we learn about the mucociliary escalator to beat those cilia we need some we can say liquefied uh, mucus right but over here the mucus is very very thick and viscous it is very difficult for the cilia to beat right so definitely there is going to be reduced first thing there is going to be reduced periciliary layer and whatever layer is there that is going to be very very thick 
that inhibits the function of mucociliary and escalator and alters the local environment to reduce the effectiveness of antimicrobial secretion and that is going to be the problem in the lungs so in the lungs it is going to be uh, less of the secretion you can say right or more reabsorption one and the same thing that is in the airway there is going to be less of the sodium chloride but on the other hand the sweat glands won't be able to reabsorb it so there are two things occurring opposite or contrast things occurring in the sweat glands and in the lungs okay now what is the therapeutic highlights before going to uh, the therapeutic highlights before going to the therapeutic highlights i just want to show you this diagram over here which is uh, quickly saying that uh, showing how the classification of the cystic fibrosis is occurring so this is definitely not uh, given in any books it is the uh, diagram which is there on the net okay so class one defective synthesis as we uh, uh, read already class 2 defective processing or maturation class 3 defective regulation over here the processing is defective 3 may regulation is defective in type 4 or class 4 conductance is defective and in the class 5 we do have reduced synthesis and stability now understand in the genome it is only said as reduced synthesis but not stability as i told you in some medicine uh, books uh, we do have six classes uh, which is given for the cystic fibrosis as i told you in the medicine book there are going to be six different classification which are shown now what is the sixth uh, class over here now look over here the synthesis is uh, given as a fifth class and the stability decrease stability decrease synthesis is class 5 and decrease stability class 6 which is not divided in the genome separately per se and that's why they club these two into class 5 Five itself right so that's the only difference uh, between the uh, you know the classification which is given in the genome uh, or if the classification is of uh, five classes and six classes right which is given in some medicine books right so yes if uh, they ask you what is class six then definitely it is going to be the decrease stability okay the type of mutation this you are going to learn in the specifically in the pathophysiology if you want you can take the screenshot or you can uh, learn in the pathophysiology also let's move on to the therapeutic highlights uh, the traditional treatment of cystic fibrosis address the various symptoms chest physiotherapy and mucolytics are used to loosen thick mucus and aid lung clearance so basically this is the symptomatic treatment that we are giving over here Antibiotics are used to prevent new infections and keep the chronic infection in check. We learn that uh, the repeated infection may be fatal or it can cause the fatal destruction of lung which we need to prevent so we can get the antibiotics. Bronchodilators and anti-inflammatory medications are used to help expand and clear air passages. Pancreatic enzymes and nutritional supplements are used to increase nutrient absorption and promote weight gain now understand uh, there is wherever the secretions are occurring wherever there are cilia definitely there are going to be chloride channels and in all those areas in all those organs there is going to be difficulty in the cystic fibrosis patient so uh, not only in the respiratory system since we are learning about the respiratory system so the main focus is given on respiratory system that is the vital function but yes the pancreatic secretions are also going to be very very thick and uh, lesson of the um, pancreatic enzymes which are there in the duodenum over the period of time will cause the digestive and uh, absorptive dysfunctions also so it can give the nutrient supplements for that are uh, increase the nutrient absorption and promote weight gain why because weight loss is one of the symptom of the patient because of the single gene mutation of the disease gene therapy has been closely examined now what is single gene if the single gene is defective we can replace that gene or we can give the gene therapy okay if uh, many genes are uh, involved in that disease it is very difficult to give gene therapy okay so yes now nowadays uh, the gene therapy is getting examined whether it is effective or not but remember the research says that it is only effective in 5% of the population 
So definitely, yes, there is more research going on in this area. However, results have not been successful. That, as I already mentioned, research says the latest research says that it is effective in five percent of the patients only. More recently, drugs that target the molecular defects have been advancing in clinical trials and are showing great promise for the better treatment. The newly developed genome editing tool, that is CRISPR-Cas9, clustered what is CRISPR? Clustered regulatory interspaced short palindromic repeats that is CRISPR associated nuclease 9 uh, will become a highly promising in vivo gene therapy for cystic fibrosis in vivo means inside the body by correcting the mutation or mutations of the CFDR gene whether there is a single mutation or many mutation but the gene is going to be a single G okay so that is all about the cystic fibrosis in the comment i got uh, one request for the chapter the next video is going to be on that chapter if you want me to review any of the chapter in the genome especially because this is a standard book throughout the world not only in the india but throughout the world so definitely i'm going to stick to the genome per se right now okay if you want me to review some other chapters in the genome you can comment on that okay thank you i hope you like the session Thank you very much. See you in the next video.